Good morning, everyone. Today, uh, I would like to thank GFA and Merck Sono to organize the wonderful meeting. And the second person that I would like to thank is Dr. Tirapon because he made me confused in the morning. When I come to this room, he, he asked me, the first thing, thing that he asked me about, uh, Mashukhan, you come to the wrong place. This is not a fashion show event. Yeah, this is an academic event. Okay, it's just a joke. I would like to make you relax. Uh, today, uh, this is a very interesting topic from HA meeting. Uh, I would like to present the topic about novel genetic testing in ART. Uh, I would like to categorize the topic into part, two parts. The first part, we start with the next generation sequencing technology. As we know, the next generation sequencing developed uh, from the anuproidy screening uh, as the first. And after that, we move to the single gene disorder and also we can detect the de novo mutation with this technology. But we have a lot of company to create this platform. We have to know uh, the objective of your, uh, of your patient that you want to detect. You have to choose the optimized platform for that. And that's why I would like to present the update data about the result of next generation sequencing in both PTS and PTD, uh, PTD objective. Let's start with the uh, next generation sequencing. And after that, we will move to the second part of the uh, genetic testing, how to improve the outcome and how to select the genetic method. Uh, okay. The first topic we will talk about the frequency of a new priority state that of the five and the six blastocysts accessed by NTS methods. As we know that the MBO with the highest morphology score have a higher U prolate if you compare to the lower quality MBO. In the IVF cycle, you will have the cohort of the MBO that are synchronous in development. And tofactoderm biopsy also can do on day five or day six post fertilization. But now we still unknown whether biosocial morphology and developmental rate relate to the MBO chromosomal constitute. That's why this study uh, aim to access the correlation between day five and day six biosocial morphology and priority status. This is a retrospective study performed in single center. The median age of women around 38 years old. They perform uh, day five biopsy on 61 blastocysts. Oh, sorry, 61 blastocysts were included, and 104 tofactoderm biopsy performed on day five, and 64 performed on day six. All of them proceed to the whole genome amplification and use next generation sequencing as the genetic analysis method. From this table, you can see that uh, the U priority rate was higher in the day three, day three biosis if compared to day six, and also is no significantly different between the biosis morphology between day five and day six biosis. And also the u pri and anu pri did not significantly different in the good and poor morphology group in the both group. From this graph show, the blue color show day five and the green color show day six basosis. If you transfer on day five basosis, result in higher both clinical and implantation rate. The conclusion of this study was uh, slower developing basosis cryopreserve on day six do not have the similar chromosomal status and provide lower chance of achieving pregnancy if you compare to the same stage on day five. The clinical implication is the u prime MBO tend to show faster progression if you compare to a new prime MBO. From this uh, topic, uh, anyone have the experience about this? 
because uh, I have some data from the RBM online. They have a different conclusion. Uh, the, the other data is also different design. This one is retrospective study, and the other data is a prospective study. And also the population may be more than this. Uh, they conclude that they, per, they, uh, they do the same method, compare day five and day six, biotosis, and use the LACGH, oh, and use the next generation sequencing as a platform. But the result, they said that uh, is comparable uh, pregnancy rate if the MBO is also u prime even you transfer on day five or day six. Let's move to the next topic. It's about uh, PTD by using next generation sequencing technology. Uh, the topic is about the first clinical application of PTD for beta thalassemia combined with PTS on breast cell from fresh and also vitify oocyte by using NTS technique. As you know that beta thalassemia have uh, we, in Thailand or even the Asian people, we have a lot of carrier. Uh, let's move to the background that the NTS technology, as I said, is developed to the, in the first, they developed to the aneuploidy skinning, and after that, they moved to the other method, just like single gene mutation or de novo or the other uh, benefit from this method. This study want to use the next generation sequencing for PGD of beta thalassemia combined with PTS. This study involved seven infertile couple carrying beta globin gene, and also to factor themselves of biosis produced from both fresh and vitified oocyte were used. They biopsy on day five or day six, and after that they moved to the whole genome amplification and used the ion tolon as a sequencing technique. From this diagram, in the upper panel, we do the PTD from the NTS, and the lower panel, we do the PTS. Uh, after we screening, uh, the MBO is normal. After we do the both, uh, PT and PTS with NTS, we get the 10 MBO that uh, you ploy and also less than one beta globin mutation. And after that, we transfer seven MBO and a resulting in clinical pregnancy. From this study, uh, they, they would like to emphasize that even you use the single NTS technology, it is possible to diagnose both a nuploidy skinning and also single gene disorder. Uh, this study used fresh and also vitified oocyte is increase the number of available to transfer and also save the cost of genetic analysis. The clinical implication in case of remit ovarian response is it's possible to combine the diagnosis of embryo from fresh and vitified oocyte. Okay. Before we move to the second part of uh, today's call, I just want to uh, introduce that uh, in the infertility doctor, we're wondering why even we do the PTS and the embryo is u why it, we, we still get the lower pregnancy rate. Let's move to the meta-analysis. Even the cochlear review in the past, uh, maybe before 2011, uh, we can clearly see that uh, in the PTS group, still lower pregnancy rate if you compare with the control group. We, we analyzed to all of the paper that they recruit in the meta-analysis that they always do the biopsy on day five, uh, oh, sorry, on day three, and also the genetic analysis method still use the fish technique. And that's why we try to move to how to get the the good outcome if you do PTS. We try to use the high throughput method, such as the array CGH or NTS or even qPCR. That's why today we will talk about that. And also, how can we select the genetic testing? If you have the patient, uh, just like for Thailand, you have a lot of patients of beta thalassemia, beta E disease. Uh, even hemophilia or any like genetic disorder, how can we choose the appropriate genetic analysis method? 
Okay, let's move to the next topic. The first one I will talk about the meta-analysis of RCT. They do the PTS by using uh, CCS or comprehensive chromosome screening technology to improve the MBO selection. Uh, from this study, they recruit the RCT that screening, uh, the screening genetic by CCH and also compare with the other selection of uh, MBO technique, just like morphology. Uh, in the most RCT, RCT, just like I said, that is low pregnancy rate because they're using fish technology. It's a lot of uh, limitation, just like the technical error or uh, subjective interpretation. However, whether PGD CCS improved MBO selection in IVF remain unclear until now. The aim of this meta-analysis want to determine whether the use of PGS CCS technique to improve the MBO selection in IVF cycle. Uh, this meta-analysis recruit RCT that published before January 2015. Uh, all of the RCT eligible to compare PTD CCS with the other method of MBO selection. The outcome all of them compared with uh, were clinical and also sustained implantation rate. 267 MBO transfer after PTD CCS compared with 383 uh, used the selection method by only morphology alone. This table shows that the three RCT that we met the full criteria, we select from the 750 articles. For the first one is the paper from Yang. He, he may be a group of Chinese California. They use array CTH as a platform compared with the maybe morphology uh, look good, only single MBO transfer. And the other, the second and third one from the same clinic in New Jersey, they use the qPCR as a genetic analysis method. From this table, you can clearly see that uh, the, it's significantly higher clinical implantation rate when compared with morphological base alone. You can see the list ratio is 1.29. Uh, even, even the sustained implantation rate. Okay, even the sustained implantation rate is still higher in the PTS group. Yes. And from this meta analysis, we can conclude that in the patient with normal or less bond, because in all of the three RCT that they recruit in this study, the median age group lower than 35 years old. Or it's almost around 32 or 31 years old. Uh, the PTD CCS significantly higher clinical and also sustained implantation rate. And however, PTD CCS still invasive and carry financial burden. If we want to extend to the other group, we have to validate this method and we have to get more, more evidence for that. The clinical implication, PTD CCS improved the MBO selection compared to the use of MBO morphology alone. And it might be helpful if you are setting one to use the single MBO transfer. It will be reduce the chance of multiple pregnancy rate and increase the chance of preg pregnancy rate and lower the chance of miscarriage rate. Yes. The second one talk about the high success rate of PTD in uh, achieving healthy baby for rare monogenic disorder. I think a lot of uh, doctors in this room maybe face the problem with the couple that carry single gene disorder and maybe they have a first child die from this disease and they come to uh, consult you that they want to have second child that may be healthy. How can we do for this problem? Let's, let's start with the background with the first application of PTD in monogenic dis 
order. They start in 1990 uh, with the X-Link disorder. Uh, they performed by Alan uh, Handyside. And after that, we still use it until now. But we just changed the method. Maybe at the beginning, we used only the PCR or FISH. But now we have the, uh, the other high throughput, just like the next generation sequencing or even KO mapping method. From, the, from this PTD, um, for this aspect, we can see that after we apply this in 1990, it's become effective method to prevent uh, prenatal diagnosis. Uh, from, from then to now, we estimate that we have more than 350 monogenic disorder, monogenic condition that maybe give a birth of thousands of the healthy children. For now, we still have a few reports about the technical application of lab monogenic disorder, such as the coenzyme Q deficiency or liver congenital amaurosis. That's why the, this study want to determine the clinical outcome of PGD cycle performed for lab monogenic disorder, and also evaluate whether the method has been successful in terms of both diagnosis and clinical efficiency. This study is a retrospective study conducted in uh, 17 PTD cycle for nine couples, refer for PTD due to nine different lab monogenic disorder. They perform during 10 years because it's a lab monogenic disorder. Uh, if we want to start the PTD setup, we have to perform the initial parent peripheral by DNA sample because we have to set up the informative STR marker. Because if you know that uh, if they get the first child, but uh, the, the mother and father still healthy, they didn't concern that they have a carrier of some genetic disease. Maybe the, the first child uh, that, that uh, they have the disease create from the novel mutation. Uh, we have to find out that the first child uh, get the disease from the novel or they get the disease passed from her father or her mother. That's why we have to establish the STR marker first. We want to know that disease passed from the parent or is created by themselves. The PTD also perform on both day three on day five biopsy. And mutation analysis performed by PCR RFLP method and polymorphic STR marker. From the HA guideline, they, they suggest that you have to use at least three marker. But from my center, we do the project of the uh, PTD, also in lab monogenic disease. We use the six marker because we concern about uh, if we do the amplification in single cell, the genetic material may be only five to seven picogram. If if we do even the best method of whole genome amplification, uh, just like MDA, uh, they amplify a lot of material from picogram to uh, from nanogram to picogram, but we still face the problem of ADO or early dropout. If you use only three marker, maybe you can make a confuse when when is uh, when the ADO is happen. That's why my center use uh, six STR marker. Yes. From this table show some of the lab monogenic disorders, just like the coenzyme Q10 Lafora disease, liver, fraser, or other than loss disease. You can clearly see that the pregnancy rate was achieved in 62.5%, and even implantation rate of four of 48.1%. Life birth rate around 77.7. We have 11 baby born from this study. Uh, seven of them is a full-term delivery, uh, including four singleton, four set, two set of twin, and one set of triplet. You can clearly see that uh, they have a high life birth rate because the patient in this age group didn't face the problem of infertility. They just want to find a healthy baby. That's why the pregnancy rate is still high. The clinical implication, the high efficiency of the diagnosis procedure, and also high life birth rate 
report in this study indicate that PTD is highly successful when you use in the couple at least of rare monogenic disorder. Let's move to the next topic. Uh, they talk about the recurrent pregnancy loss. Uh, they compare the life birth between uh, natural conception and PTS or PTD in the group that uh, face the problem of RPL or recurrent pregnancy loss with translocation disorder. As we know, the estimated cause of recurrent pregnancy loss includes uterine anomaly or antiphospholipid syndrome, even the chromosomal abnormality, especially translocation. The PTD that we want to use because we want to prevent miscarriage in the patient with RPL associated with trans translocation. But uh, now they still didn't, they don't have a cohort study conduct to compare live birth rate in the patient uh, matched for the age and the number of previous miscarriage. The aim of this study uh, want to determine whether PTD improved the live birth rate compared to natural conception in the special group of the patient with recurrent pregnancy loss associated with translocation. This study is a cohort study they performed during 2010 and 2013. They follow up pregnancy until 2014. 160, uh, 126 Japanese recruit in this study. Uh, 52 uh, attempt natural conceive, while 74 try to undergo PTD after genetic counseling. Live birth led cumulative live birth and also miscarriage led is the study outcome. The PTD performed on day three and they still use the fish technology for the genetic analysis method. From this table show the cumulative live birth rate is not different. But in the PGD group, you can see that the miscarriage rate is decreased significantly. The, the prevalence of twin pregnancy was significantly higher in the PGD group. Yes. The conclusion of this study, the PGD significantly prevent further miscarriage rate, but they still didn't different in the live birth rate. The single embryo transfer should be selected to prevent the higher risk of multiple pregnancy and also preterm delivery. The clinical implication during genetic counseling, the couple should be fully informed of the advantage and also disadvantage of PGD, uh, especially the cost because the life birth rate did not different, but the cost is higher in the PGD group. And you should emphasize that maybe it just lower the, the miscarriage rate, only that. But the advantage and also the advantage of natural pregnancy. Yeah. Uh, from this study, actually we have the systematic review, maybe uh, published in RBM online that they have the same conclusion that uh, from the natural conception and PTD group, the live birth rate is not different, but it significantly reduces the miscarriage rate. You have to discuss to the patient with the cause of the PTD cycle. Let's move to the last topic. Uh, it's about the PTS in IVF cycle with the frozen embryo transfer to year experience in the one PTS cycle. Uh, let's start with the background. You know that the CCS, the, the outcome of CCS is still controversy. But now, uh, from the CCS uh, method, it significantly increased pregnancy rate in the both group, even the growth prognosis patient, just like the, the meta analysis that I present, or even in the advanced maternal age group. This study want to uh, ascertain whether PTS improved pregnancy rate in IVF with ET of frozen embryo and whether PTS result and clinical out outcome differ in relation to advanced maternal age. The PTS data correct during two years. Uh, clinical outcome compared between the PTS and non-PTS group. They categorize patient into three groups. Uh, the first group, 
is uh, the is less than 30 seconds. The second less than 38, and the last one is more than 38. And the PTS analysis uh, performed on day five and use CGS as a platform. You can clearly see from this graph that uh, the new priority rate increased with maternal age. Okay. It's, it's, uh, it will be compared between uh, PTS and non-PTS group. In the PTS group, pregnancy rate did not significantly differ between the age group, as you can clearly see from this graph. Okay. The conclusion of this study is was statistically significant increased pregnancy rate in the PTS group compared with non-PTS. Even you do in the frosted MBO cycle. Is higher pregnancy rate predominantly even you transfer in the order, even you compare in the order maternal age group. And the clinical implication PTS is a useful method for choosing viable MBO for frost central cycle, particularly in the patient with advanced maternal age. Uh, from all of the topic, we, let, we will move to the summarize. Okay. From the first one of next generation sequencing, from the LIST study, the UPROI MBO tend to show faster progression if you compare with a NUPROI MBO. This study concludes that they find, uh, they find transfer get uh, pregnancy like more than their sixth transfer. From the SHAMOA, in the case of limit or less bond, uh, it is possible to combine the diagnosis of the MBO from fresh and vitify all size. This is the option for the couple that uh, limit the ovarian less bond and also it will save the cost for the patient and increase the number of MBO for transfer. For the second part of this topic, uh, the, the study of DAHO is a meta-analysis of CCS. Uh, the PTD CCS improved the MBO selection compared to use of MBO morphology alone. The second topic from TAC the, is high efficiency of the diagnosis procedure and high liver rate. If you do the PTD in the high list, uh, in the in the lab monogenic disorder to prevent uh, disease in the second child. From the ICUMA study. Uh, the PT, PT, PTD significantly prevent miscarriage late, but it not different in live birth late. From the last study from Huber, it statistically significant increased pregnancy late after PTD, PTS in the frozen thaw cycle. If you compare to the group that they didn't do PTS, and the higher the higher rate still increased in the group of older maternal age group. That's all the, the presentation of today. Yes. Yes.